Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to start the build of our laser cutter engraver project I've been talking about for a while. Uh, got most of the 3D printed parts printed out. Um, and I think uh, I showed in an earlier video some of the parts that I had gotten in for the laser. It's taken a while to kind of collect them. And so, uh, uh, but before we get started, one of the first things I want to do is caution everybody, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. I probably shouldn't even be doing this. Um, but I do uh, understand a little bit about the dynamics of lasers, electronics, and everything, so to stay on the safe side. Um, this is a very powerful laser. This is a 2-watt laser diode. Uh, it will blind you. It will cause physical damage. It is uh, a risky proposition. Um, and again, something that I do not uh, really recommend unless you know what you're doing. So um, anything you do with this, you're on your own. Uh, basically, this is uh, going to be a little bit of an educational video, how to deal with static components, static sensitive components, and that kind of stuff. And um, share how it all kind of works and everything is sort of instructional. But again, if you decide to do something like this, you're on your own because it is a bit risky business. So... With that out of the way, what we do have is a 2-watt laser diode. Uh, got it off eBay out of Bulgaria for about 40 US dollars. Um, actually, very, very small, so as you can see here. Um, and so we also have uh, laser housing. There's there's a lot of parts. This is going to be the carrier for the laser. The, the diode will go in there. We do have a glass lens. And if you are going to do this, you have to match, um, in the number one, at this wattage, you have to make sure you have a glass lens, not a plastic lens. And you have to make sure that this is rated for this frequency of diode. I forget what the frequency is off the top of my head, but before purchasing it, I did make sure. Uh, this is a 400, uh, 445 nanometer blue laser diode. So when I did order this, I did match this to this and also when I bought this I also ordered laser uh, protective eyewear that matches uh, for this frequency or attenuates for this frequency so uh, be very sure all the stuff you're getting is right again this this is um, uh, you know not something to take lightly because again this isn't like where you know you're working with a high-speed rotary tool or something where you get your hand in the way of it this thing you know you can be across the room you can be you know at two watts you can be across the field and it will still blind you and within inches it will definitely sear your skin and and so again not not for the faint of heart here but anyways so this will actually go inside of here uh, we got a cooling fan this is this is the main heat sink so this unit goes inside here and we got a heat sink now. Also, we have a laser driver here. So this will be our driver. Um, I bought this off of eBay for like $11 also. It matches the diode, does a couple different things. This is a pulse width modulated driver. So because one of the pieces that I do want to do with this is also engraving. So you, we can hook this to the spindle output. So it'll act like, you know, adjusting the spindle speed it'll adjust the intensity of the laser so as it moves across and burns it will burn in a dithered type of pattern if you will uh, creating the image so that was one of the things that was important about this because there's a number of simpler drivers out there in which for pure cutting are probably better than this however part of it and you, as you'll see when we do the carriage build portion um, Part of what I wanted to do was was to do T-shirts. Uh, I seen online was was pretty interesting, burning logos into T-shirts. Uh, you know, basically sintering the T-shirt material, the polyester, uh, with a laser, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So I wanted to build one of that size to um, to do that on T-shirts. And so uh, again, that's why I selected this. If I was just purely going to use it to cut. I probably would not have selected this. I'd have probably made my own um, driver, a more robust driver, because, again, the constant on really uh, pulls on the circuit. 
also I'll probably add some heat sinks to the driver chips on this um, uh, board in the future if I keep this. So what we'll have to see. I might even add, you know, do a second board and switch between boards because one of the things that I'm going to do is, is plumb a separate wire to the laser and then feed it into the board. So maybe I'll switch between boards with a switch uh, depending upon my use. Anyways, um, wanted to share that dynamic. Uh, so, but getting into this, uh, one of the things is, is, as you can already see, the laser diode is small. It is also very static sensitive. So it comes actually with a jumper between the two leads already, uh, you know, to prevent, you know, a static buildup and discharge to one of the pins where it wants to travel through and, and basically burn out the junction. Again, th th this is a $40 diode. Now, I, I believe these are, these are, um, these have already been used for some purpose and then removed, most likely aerospace production or something like that. That typically is what happens. So this is not brand new. I think a new one would probably be around 100 US dollars or such. So anyways, so that's a very important piece. So the other important piece in handling it is, well, I have um, a wristband on, a static sensitive wristband, which is important to have because as I handle this, I don't want to obviously have a static discharge. The other thing in connecting the wire to it, I've connected both of the ends of the wire that will be connected. So you can kind of see here on this side will be the two ends which go, which will attach to the, the diode itself. Now by connecting these two wires at this end, again it's acting like this jumper and preventing static discharge between the two as I connect one wire and especially as I touch the soldering iron to it. The other thing with the soldering iron, the soldering iron is also grounded, so it is uh, for static sensitive components. When I go to attach these to this, then what will happen is, um, again, it will be grounded and I won't, I won't run the risk of um, doing that. The other piece is, this gets very hot, and you can see the brass casing on here, and the idea is it will transfer the heat to this brass casing, which will transfer the heat to this large aluminum casing, which then has this fan which cools it. Um, so, to facilitate all that, I also have a uh, heat sink compound, which I'll be using, um, kind of get, you know, all over uh, for, you know, like computer heat sinks, etc. So it's just, excuse me, regular heat sinking material. I'll put a little bit on this before it goes into this casing, because basically what happens is this plunger will press this diode into this case, the wires will run up through here and out, and so you want a good solid thermal connection. Now, being basically brass on brass will be pretty good on its own, but touching a little bit. Now, when, when I put this on, I don't know if I showed on the video or not, because uh, I'm going to try to do all this. It is working with small stuff, and it's kind of difficult to do on camera and talk and everything else in the meantime. I'm going to put it on a little bit of a toothpick, if you will, just a little bit around there. You don't, you won't need a lot, obviously, because it, it is a, pr a press fit inside here. So just a little bit of a touch just to fill in any type of void, etc. I will also, when this gets mounted into this, I will put some on this. Before I do that, however, one of the things you'll notice that this, this housing has a dust shield on it. So you can't get, so as this sits up inside there like that, you can't get your fingers in there to adjust it. So what I will do is I will set this up external of the big heat sink. I will adjust the focus point of this lens before I do that. And I'll do that very carefully with a set of pliers locked into a vise, hitting a ceramic, uh, a dark ceramic target uh, to set the focus point of the laser. So I'll set it for about three inches because that's probably about how high my gantry is going to be above the work surface that I'm going to use. Um, and I'm also going to have a little bit of an adjustment on the gantry itself. And, and I'll show that when we build the hardware side. Uh, so that's how that's, this will go together. Also, since this is a diode, if you're not familiar, um, there is a positive and negative side. The package which comes with shows it is um, which one's, you know, the anode and which one's the cathode. Uh, right now, this is actually uh, rotated, so it's referenced in basically this, this way towards myself. And so when I solder it up, you know, obviously I'm going to match, you know, the... Um, black with the cathode and, and the positive with the anode and so when I run it out I can um, you know clearly wire it into the controller. The controller is powered by a 12 volt power supply 
I'm just going to use a little 12 volt, 1 amp wall wart to, uh, for testing purposes. Uh, I probably won't crank it all the way up for the test. Again, I'll keep it down. This potentiometer also adjusts the output of the, um, the laser too. So I'll probably again crank it down for, you know, calibration and things like that. And crank it up when it goes into the um, unit itself. So, anyways, I'm going to go uh, start this. Oh, one other thing I mentioned. I did put some heat shrink tube over this. Um, uh, so, you know, just to make doubly sure, because I'll heat shrink this on once I finish soldering it to make this all really uh, nice, secure electrical fitting around, uh, where is it, the uh, the plunger that goes in here. So, uh, and then that sticks out the top. So, uh, again, keeping it pretty secure because there's not a lot really to mess with on the end of this. So, I am also going to use magnifying glass goggles to, to do this. This is another reason I don't really want to do it on camera is... Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of enough to juggle around, but once I get it done, we'll come back and take a look. See you in a few minutes. So we're back. We've uh, now got the lead soldered on. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention that makes it easier when you do this is to pre-tin the leads, if you will. And so basically you just touch the lead, the soldering iron, and, and to the diode, and it, it basically attaches. and. I've also heat shrunk the tubes down on there. Uh, also, a little bit of trick with this, uh, another piece to, to mention, one of the reasons I have it in this alligator clip stand and everything like this is just so this also acts as a little bit of an extended heat sink, if you will, um, for the diode. And the other piece with heat shrinking the tube, again, so you don't get too much heat on it, because this is a little plastic separator down here, is I let the heat gun come up to temperature first before applying it to what the, 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 what I'm heat shrinking. So for example, in this case, I let it come up, I hit it on both sides real quick, and so the heat shrink tube will react before you know most of the other plastic will in this case and, and shrink down. So kind of a couple other little tips when, when doing something like this that just makes this cleaner. And as you can see, you know, we got the heat shrink tubing on there. So uh, the next step, we'll go ahead and insert this actually in the brass housing and then come back once we have that complete. Okay, before doing the insertion, what I kind of wanted to show was come back and, and just show this real quick. So a couple things I've done is I've inserted this into the what I'm calling the, the, the plunger. Um, so you can see how, how it rests against the top of the diode. I'm not sure in the camera if you can see, but if it's coming to focus, but I've got, as I said, I with a little bit of the toothpick, I put on some of that uh, heat, heat uh, compound, uh, not again, very, very much, just, just very, very little, and I was careful not to get it anywhere near the, um, the lens of the diode, so again, not a lot, because it's going to uh, push up into the housing, so... Now, basically, what we end up doing is inserting this in, into the housing like this and screwing this down until it, it becomes fully tight. Now, there's a couple little pins here, and um, I'm not going to do this on camera, but I'll have to dig, dig it up to, uh, to put in a tool. They do make tools, but you can also use just a couple small screwdrivers to act as a tool to spin this in until it, it's tight against there. And then basically this will form uh, our laser assembly, so our, our end assembly. And again, um, this will end up sliding into this housing sort of like this. And there's a retainer clamp that holds it on. Now the reason for the dust shield is um, so smoke doesn't get in, it, well I shouldn't say so smoke doesn't get in the way. I guess that maybe that's the best way to explain it. So, um, particle matter really doesn't get in the way because we, we might even add like a little air blower or something to blow the smoke away uh, or to suck it away it probably adds something to that but it's kind of uh, designed to keep stuff from getting up on the lens or back into the cavity I don't know how well it'll work but I know that's what it's there for um, it also spins out and so I thought about machining this down and just having the, the laser the lens stick out but We'll see how it goes. So again, I'll focus this first before this gets permanently mounted. So the next step, what I'm going to do is connect this up to the um, the laser board, and then I'm going to see about powering up the laser board and see if this all actually works. So we'll see you back. 